Hello and welcome. I'm AJ. I'm Alex. And this is NTVN New Tech Vintage Nerds. That's right. Today we're going to talk about streaming services or downloading. Do and you download? It, is that legal? Mm, let's roll that intro. <laughs> Before we dive into our main topic on streaming or downloading, what's the latest gadget you bought? The latest gadget I bought? Let me think about that for a second. Maybe you can fill it in <laughs> while, yeah. I, while I think about it. Yeah, uh, well, my gadget is um, a Samsung T7 SSD. Um, I record video with my iPhone and... If I want to record in log, where you get maximum amount of information in uh, in the recording, then you really need a SSD, especially when you uh, want to record in 4K uh, 60 frames per second. So I uh, I purchased a uh, an SSD for my phone. All right, and the rest will come tonight. I hope that's uh, I purchased a cage with handles so you can. Uh, um, hold it up more easily like a like a DSLR, uh, and you can mount all kinds of stuff on it: uh, cold shoe, ND filter, uh, battery pack. Because if you use right. an SSD and your phone, it will get uh, empty pretty soon. Yeah, the batteries are, are not size for that. Uh, no, so I got a ten thousand milliamp uh, battery for it. Mm. I think I can record some uh, some video. That, that will keep you up and running for some time. Yeah. yeah. I was I was told that the the wireless charging of your iPhone actually deteriorates the battery quicker than the uh, standard charge by wire action. Uh, yeah, I read it as well, and it, it's pretty logical because when you charge wirelessly, you put a lot, a lot of um, power through the air things get uh, warmer and if the battery gets warmer it will de deteriorate faster and it's less efficient because a lot of the uh, power actually dissipates exactly um so i just thought what uh, what gadget i bought and uh, it's not really a gadget but it's um sort of caused by a gadget i actually bought two u green usb chargers okay and um, can I just, I'd, I'd like to, uh, hello, dear tech industry, I'd like to address you now. It is so wonderful that I can charge all those devices with a USB-C cable and that all of you do not include a charger anymore because yeah, obviously as a consumer, you have chargers laying around all around the house. The thing is that at some point in time, these things run out. I did. I didn't have any charges left. And I did, I did have a device to charge. So what do you do? You look for a charger. What if you don't have a charger? You have to buy a charger. That is another, uh, another reason for extra e-waste. So can we please include the chargers again? Thank you. <laughs> so that's going to be a short. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid you say that. Yeah. So you had to buy a charger because you didn't have any left. Uh, frankly, yes. Uh, I recently tossed a couple of charges that uh, stated they would uh, provide 2.4, 2.5 amps, and they didn't anymore because, well, they were not GAN charges and they they just were piles of crap. So uh, I tossed them into, uh, to, into the e-waste pack. And um, then when I had to charge the... Um, electric motor for the curtains um i didn't have any charges anymore ouch and if you remember if you open the package it's got the motor in it it's got a charging cable but no charger yep well, i you, know you, you probably have a charger lying, lying around dear customer well at this point in time <laughs> i didn't have one anymore so uh, that was not funny I sometimes also, have also did you did you know that um, a lot of devices that now offer um, USB-C, a charging via USB-C, actually do not charge 
with every USB-C charger because they do not have this smart chip on the other hand that says, well, I only charge with five volts and not uh, something else. So uh, if you folks if out there, if you actually charge your USB-C device with some USB-C charger and it's not charging, it's not that the device is broken down. It's probably a dumb device. And there's a very easy fix for that. If you have a USB-C cable which has a USB-A stacker on the other side, you can then use a USB-A to C adapter again. It doesn't matter. As long as it's got this USB-A stacker in the middle, you're stacker. fine. It will charge 5 volts no matter what. Yeah, you mean a USB-A plug probably. Yeah, stacker, pro plug, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I noticed uh, w when I char I was charging my Kindle that uh, it, it wouldn't charge, and it 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 has a micro USB adapter, but not all cables uh, do uh, um, power distribution. And even with USB C, you have to make sure that it really does do that. Otherwise, it it won't charge. Nope. No, and uh, I ran into this issue a couple of times because the device on the other hand didn't account for me uh, putting in a, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I had a, um, a MacBook charger lying around with USB-C on the other end that definitely does provide more than 5 volts. Yeah. And and the device on the other end just said, I don't know what this thing wants, but uh, I'm not charging with this power, man. <laughs> um, so I thought actually initially that uh, that it uh, 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 that it broke down. But it didn't. It was just that there was there was a mismatch, and when I used another power adapter, which did provide five volt, then it would charge fine. So this, but it's you know you know it's stupid, right? I mean, the, uh, how many electronic devices do not uh, rechargeable electronic devices do not come with this little uh, text block in the in the manual that says if you do not charge this with a proper charger, then warranty is void. Uh, warranty is void. Yeah. Right, but if you do not provide me with a proper charger, how am I supposed to do, to know that it doesn't have an intelligent chip in it, and I can't charge it with a two hundred watt uh, USB C charger? You're not telling me that. It's in the fine print in the documentation, but then you have to read the documentation. It, it, usually, that stuff isn't in the fine print at all. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't read that much documentation, so I don't know. Fair point, but yeah, yeah. So going from one rant to the other, <laughs> raining. Yeah, streaming services versus versus downloading your your favorite series and movies. What's what's your take on that? Well, um, uh, we did some cable cutting, so we we only use streaming services. Uh, we have got uh, we have got a subscription at almost everything: uh, HBO Max, Netflix, Amazon Prime. Oh wow! Disney, Curiosity TV. That was a was an offer. Um, and I it's been. That. I did not know they had a subscription. I do have Curiosity Channel on my one of my streaming services, but yeah, that, they, 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 they have they a separate channel. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Um, and I think I'm missing some. Um, the, the problem I have with it, it's every time it's, it's a small subscription. When HBO Max started, you could get it for two euros, I believe. It, it was pretty low. But if you sum them all up, it's, it's getting already to 80 or 100 euros. And how much did you spend on your cable subscription? <laughs> How much did I spend yep. or do I spend? You don't have the cable anymore, so. Well, I, I do have cable because that's a prerequisite for the internet uh, here do, do at home. Do you have the TV subscription? Uh, we don't have t TV subscription. So what's a TV subscription? Uh, three euros something, because so. that's an addition to the internet connection in, right, in, right, 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 instead right. of the other way around. Um. If I had a other internet connection, which I can't get here, Not then yet. it would probably uh, be that the TV subscription would cost 
around 50 euros. So my uh, fiber provider does does offer a TV subscription. So that you just, you just get a, a set top box and they run this uh, and a side channel on the uh, on the uh, fiber optic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to do some strange things with my router. Um, I tried to get it to work once, but it really didn't. Um, we use it in the past, though, and, and quite satisfactory, honestly. Um, but uh, at some point in time, I got fed up with it uh, also. And, and this is, I think, recognizable because you get... I don't know, uh, 40, 50 channels. I know in the US you even get uh, 100 or 200 channels-ish. Um, and how many of them do you really watch? Uh, 10, 12, maybe. Yeah. And and that, that would be about it. Um, and then they tend to vary a couple of channels, or at least over here. Um, and usually the channels that I use to, that, you know, a screen filling, so to speak, um, yeah. Those are the channels that that uh, are, get cut m- most of the time, and they then replace it with something else. You know, uh, I know we had TCL, which is isn't that the channel from from uh, uh, what's uh, what's it called? Uh, TCL. Yeah. TLC. Sorry. TLC. TLC. Yeah, that's what. Um, uh, we had that for a while, and then suddenly it was replaced with something else, and now we have. Um, Curiosity TV, but I do not have Discovery anymore. Oh know. wow! Yeah, it's it, it, I don't know. Um, yeah. So um, I think that that's one of the things. Like when you got a regular TV subscription, you don't have choice. You get fifty, hundred, two hundred channels, and somebody else exactly. decides when you can watch something. And I mean, it's it's a lot of reruns, and especially some channels. Um, will uh, publish uh, yeah. at uh, four o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock. But there's you can't say I want to watch now because now I have the time. Um, not always, but uh, quite a lot actually. Uh, so I have uh, what we in the Netherlands call NLZ, mm-hmm. which is uh, I think a subscription of roughly ten ten euros a month ish, ten twelve ish. I can't remember. It's not yeah. a whole lot. And uh, it gives me all the Dutch channels I watch. Uh, and and also some I don't. But the uh, um, first of all, the amount of channels is radically reduced. I think they have 18 or 20 channels of which I watch, I think, well, roughly the, the, the 10 or 12 I mentioned before. And the other 8, 9, 10 I don't care for, but I don't, I don't mind. Hmm. Um, then uh, I do have Netflix, uh, the 4K subscription even, um, although we do not watch a whole lot of Netflix. Um, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, or Apple TV Plus it's called now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and I bought a YouTube subscription as well because I was fed up with the insanely irritating ads. Yep. Um, but that is about it, and I think that roughly sets me back, say, 10, 30, well, Amazon, I'd get with Amazon Prime, so that's that's more of an, a, a, a sort of a free add-on. Yeah. Uh, I do pay for the Apple, but not much. I think that's about three euros in the total Apple subscription. So I think that it, it, it will be some, somewhere between 40 and 50 euros. So it's it's not bad. It's not bad. Well, well, I do not. I do not have Disney Plus. I do not have uh, Sky. What's it called? Uh, I do Sky not, Showtime. Showtime. I do not have uh, whatever. I don't. I don't have any other Check. subscription. Check. <clears throat> I well, I'm not saying that I collect streaming services, but. A lot of the series I watch or want to watch are on different platforms. So yeah, the Marvel um, universe is on Disney Plus. Uh, Star oh, Wars yeah, is on Disney those, Plus. Yeah. Um, 
Netflix is a lot of Star Trek. So I, if I want to rewatch Star Trek, or Prime, um, yeah, it depends on on the on the series, on on who pays the most, probably. Yeah. Um, hello, hello, Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I watched a lot of series that were on HBO Max, and uh, the problem is. When you got them all, uh, if you want to watch them, when do you? Well, first of all, when do you watch it? Because that sounds like Pokemon. You got to get them all. <laughs> yeah. um, but like HBO Max had a uh, let's call it an initial initial offering where you could purchase a subscription for one, two, three euros. It pretty low. Yeah. If you would purchase it now, it would be higher. And they said that if you purchase it now, it will be a lifelong subscription price. When are you going to say, mm, I don't watch it uh, uh, enough? Um, I don't watch it anymore, sorry. Um, do I stop my subscription? Well, then if I want to watch the series again, I have to... Uh, resubscribe but then my price is going to be higher than uh, previous where is that tipping point yeah so it's FOMO all over again it is it, it, well basically um, and this is how we got actually to <laughs> to this topic uh, there was a uh, a, a news uh, message on one of the sites that I uh, read and um, I'll, I'll get to that in the, in the tips, but uh, fresh RSS, clean. <laughs> um, where uh, the Dutch equivalent of the IRAA was uh, was actually referred to. Um, you know, but back in the day, and I think that's about roughly 30, 20, well, 20 to 30 years ago, um, when, when internet was uh, booming and uh, the entertainment industry got its first uh, uh, kick in the teeth uh, regarding uh, copyright, you know, uh, we all had uh, MP3 and uh, uh, the uh, illegal CDs and uh, illegal downloads through sites like uh, or apps like Napster and Emule and uh, you know, whatever we had and, uh, illegal downloads via news group binaries and, and, and stuff were at their height. Um, you know, the entertainment industry is an industry that deals very badly with changes, specifically changes that threaten their business model. Right. And this is, uh, uh, uh where this all comes from, right? I mean, if you remember back in the day, and this is also the same 20 or 30 years ago when you almost paid 20 or 30 bucks for a, for a CD, right? And, and almost 70 or 80% of that went back to the, the uh, record, uh, the record company. Uh, and only a dollar a CD was actually paid to the to the uh, the actual performing artist, and a dollar or two dollars were for the reseller, and all the rest went back to to the, to the record company, yeah. who then had huge buildings and huge cars and huge houses and and uh, insane amounts of money, and suddenly that whole money grabbing scheme came to an end because of this little thing called internet. And, uh, this is where this, this, these, these, uh, uh, very charming organizations like the IRAA and in, in Netherlands, we had, a uh, an organization called Brein or B-R-E-A-E-I-N, uh, uh, who were starting to, well, sort of prosecute the illegal downloaders or the illegal providers. And this, this turned into some form of manhunt or witch hunt, which, Basically, uh, with lack of, uh, or well, with disregard of privacy and all kinds of, well, very strange, uh, research methods, which were very debatable, mm -hmm. um, resulted in some, uh, damage, uh, uh, or what's it called in, in, uh, um, Yeah, right. We're gonna fill it in in the, in the summer. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, so compensation—that's the word. Yeah. Um, 
which resulted in, in compensation demands of multiple millions of dollars for a single individual, which would be insane. You will never pay that off in your lifetime, right? Because you shared a couple of illegal CDs. I mean, it's that, that was insane. Right? Yeah, so okay. fast forward, then, he, then they, the whole streaming services came up, right? And then fast forward to today, um, you know, I fast forward 20 years. Well, basically back at where we started 30 years ago, right? I mean, this is now just the new money grabbing scheme. If yeah. we, if we just make sure that we release a single episode a week there and, and we have 10 episodes. So they were, then we will at least have them. Uh, we'll skip, we'll skip one week because of all well, reasons. Football football or whatever then uh then we'll we'll bind this customer for at least three months to our streaming service yeah you know that is three times uh i don't know 10 15 dollars uh, and it, it basically is the same money grabbing scheme as the the cds and the records were 20 or 30 years ago it's the same it's the same stuff just you know the 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 product is different but the the, the money grabbing scheme is basically the same well, you could argue, I'm not saying I agree, but you could say there's a lot of time invested in building the platform, making sure that you get the right subscription, you get the, the right amount of uh, yeah. series or movies you can uh, I send to your customer. And, and, and I know that some people will be screaming, but that creating the that... that uh, Proper quality content costs a lot of money, and I'm I know I'm aware, and it does right. That's it's totally true. Creating a, a series like like uh, you know Wheel of Time or uh, The Witcher or uh, I don't know. Uh, it, and I'm, I'm aware it's it's very expensive. You need a lot of actors. You need a lot of good actors, and good actors cost a lot of money and et cetera, et cetera. So yes, that is true. And, and, you know, we recently had the actors and the writers strike because, well, a lot of, a lot of money still is stuck into companies like Paramount and Disney and whatnot. And yeah, they do not have your best interest at, uh, at heart. So they just have their own best interest at heart. This is where, where, where it all goes uh, sideways. Should you not pay for it? Well, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, I think there, there, there should be a balance between what I pay for it and what I get for it, right? It is insane that, that, uh, every single content producer has its own, uh, streaming service and I have to subscribe to, I don't know, four, five, six streaming services if I want to see four or five, uh, 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 streaming shows that are popular, right? That in the end, it will cost me 60, 80, 100 bucks a month. And, and we're back at, uh, we're back where we started 30 years ago. This should be, it, it could be different, right? Uh, um, if you look at the, the, the size of a company of, uh, like Disney or Paramount, the amount, the amount of people who work there, the, uh, uh, the revenue that they're generating and specifically what remains uh, uh, left over, uh, uh, you know, as a as a profit, that tells me that there is a lot of room in uh, b between what it costs to produce series like Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, and uh, you know whatever streaming them, having people pay for uh, for the streaming service. And then what you pay an actor and a producer to actually create the series, right? There are a lot of people involved there that do not add to the quality or the content of the series, but do profit from them a yeah. lot. So this is where I have, I have my issues. And I'm not saying that downloading uh, illegally is the, uh, well, illegally is, de is debatable in some regions, but at least downloading and not paying the, the, the streaming service is the solution to it. But it's a natural counter movement to the never ending money hunger that these companies seem to have. Yeah. Well, I, I here you say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I hear you say 
money hunger and I know that some people will want to make more money, especially shareholders, because they put the money in it and they want to see a, a revenue stream coming their way. They invest into something and they want, for every dollar they put into it, they want at least more than a dollar they put into it uh, coming back to them. So is it the fault of the subscription servers like Netflix or Disney Plus that they have that model? And because <sighs> if, if I was a company, I want to have my own subscription service because when I can give you a subscription and I know you want my services, you come back to me, you pay me money and I give you my content. If I can put my content onto another one's platform like uh, Netflix, then I have to pay Netflix to distribute my content and I get less money. Uh, well, I get the same amount of money from you as my subscriber, but I lose money because I have to pay Netflix for the distribution of that stuff. Let's, 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 let's change the, the narrative. So what, what if, what if, um, every content creating company like Paramount, they also is a Netflix and, 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 uh, Disney and whatever. What if they would, ex they would just provide their content to, uh, uh, one streaming company? And you and me as, as simple consumers would pay this streaming company, I don't know, 20, $25 a month, right? And then all these content providers would feed into that one company. It would mean that they would make maybe $2 per view less than they would providing their own streaming service. But I, on the other hand, would spend only a quarter of what I would have to spend to see them all. Yeah. And it would be extra interesting for me to subscribe to that one streaming service because they've got them all compared to, well, first of all, illegal downloading. Well, downloading illegal or shady uh, to say the least and um or having four five six seven subscriptions yeah they would still you know their their stock uh, uh their 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 uh, um their stocks would still be valuable their investors would still gain on the dollar maybe not 50% Maybe they would gain 10%. Yeah, I, I agree. It would be nice. Uh, I don't see it happening because people are greedy. Sorry. That's the thing. Uh, when I get, uh, when I can get all the money from my subscriber instead of sharing it with somebody else, it, I, I think most of the time those people will do it themselves. I mean, I don't think they will do it voluntarily. Yeah. When but you look has, at the model, there has to be a reason to do it. Otherwise they wouldn't do it. Yeah. Well, when you look at a model, I'm not saying that YouTube is perfect, but like a model on YouTube, you got a lot of ads I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> some in, other in day. Another episode. <laughs> yeah. um, but you have revenue sharing with every video you watch, you get, a part of the revenue and it's a different kind of distribution. I can place my content on YouTube and somebody else can watch it. And I need to make sure that my content is good enough that somebody wants, wants to watch my content. And if they watch my content, I yeah. get paid. 
Oh, the advantage with YouTube is that everyone can be a content provider. That's that's the big plus, right? I mean, you you yeah. we're on on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. We're, <laughs> we're here. So, uh, uh, I mean, everyone can be. Uh, then again, I mean, but I think it would be the. Um, you know, I don't. I don't agree with the fact that it would make them less money. Maybe over time it would it would make them even more money just because it's one streaming service and if the content's on there the content's on there, um, and then again I mean they would have more views of their content because more watches would come to them. Uh, also, the ones who would not have uh, uh, bought a subscription from them, but now as they are there. Yeah. would still would still watch the content right so in the end i think everyone would would benefit from it yeah it's well, just the thing is it's not immediate no it's it not be. it's not i pay and i get my money tomorrow the latest no i invest and i'll get my money somewhere in the next five years yeah and that is where I think where the problem lies, right? This is, I want my revenue now, not tomorrow, not the day after, not the year after. I want my 10, 12, 15, 20% uh, of interest. I want it now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because we had that model. Netflix was the only streaming service. And uh, companies and everyone, their content to their own platforms. And then everyone decided we want a piece of the cake. Yeah. And basically, like I said, we're now back at square one. At least that's how it feels f from a consumer standpoint. Yeah. Right? And now you, and, and that is, uh, well, I don't know how, what, what your, what your take on this is, but I, uh, for my part, think that the illegal downloads are getting into an upswing now. Yeah. Because, well, first of all, right, if you are a bit of a techie, uh, having uh, a bunch of applications work together to automatically download every new episode of the series that you like to watch and provide them to you via, I don't know, MB, Plex or whatnot, is, is so easy. If you are a bit of a tech nerd, you can do it. Yeah. This is not legal advice. This is definitely not legal <laughs> advice. But, uh, you know, look out there and you'll find ways to make this complete experience hands off. Yeah. You, you know, you built this once and then you subscribe to whatever series you want and the, the episodes automatically come to you without paying for it. Uh, well, at least without paying for a subscription, you still have to pay for all the, uh, access, but well, that's something else. Yeah. Anyway, um, that being said, you know, uh, now money like that doesn't go to the content. It goes to whoever offers the illegal content. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you would lower the bar, you would even get those revenue streams directed to you. So I think there is a case to be made here. Yeah. No, Instead of everyone trying to fill his own bucket with as much coins as they can find, you know, let's just try and and have a big bucket where we can all have our, our little handful. But yep. you can keep coming back. Yeah, yeah, I, I got a bucket there as well. It's, there, you there are no coins in there yet. Ah, come on, we just made some money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway that's our take on it uh, I don't know what you think leave your comments uh, below yeah. if you disagree or agree or whatever yeah did we miss a streaming service let us know I want to purchase it <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he does <laughs> he wants to get them all yeah so oh. got any tips then as a a bit of a bittersweet symphony next to the streaming debacle. I do. Um, and this is uh, uh, maybe not a very uh, new tip, 
uh, because the software actually is out there for quite some time. But I recently uh, rediscovered uh, what it, what is called Fresh RSS, and I love it. And um, what does it do? Well, uh, maybe if you can remember, and and uh, a lot of people use that. I don't know, uh, uh, 10, 12 years back, an RSS reader, right? An RSS reader or, or, or uh, um, a news reader, what does it do? You just subscribe to a couple of news sites like, uh, I don't know, uh, Wired and uh, uh, ZDNet and CNET and... Uh, I don't know, name a couple of others, blinking, blinking computer, well, blinking lights, bleeping computer. Yeah, that always makes those two up. And basically, it would gather the uh, articles published on the website for you, and you could just read them in a newsreader, and it would compact them for you in a single view. I used those in the past. I think you did as well. And just, yeah. it was a very nice and easy way. And, and uh, back in the day, we did that with our blog page as well. It was a very nice and easy way to just, you know, stay up to speed and stay uh, on top of the news and, and yeah. quickly read all the headlines. And, hey, that's an interesting article. And you just pick and choose. What is the cool part about uh, Fresh Hours as is it can do that. It can do web scraping, so you can also add what is the latest YouTube video of the NTVN channel, for instance. Mm. Hey, how about that, folks? Do that. Um, but uh, it can then compile that into streams with a specific tag that you give it and then restream that as an RSS street. So what I now have and I've talked about this in the past, I've got a couple of new screens throughout my house, and I, these screens are built with a software named Zebo, X-I-B-O. Um, okay. Very nice software. Uh, it, it's a, a sort of a narrow casting system, and this narrow casting system offers the opportunity to, you got it, offer or to display an RSS feed. So now I can... Combine my newsfeed, make sure it has the articles I want, compose that RSS feed, and then publish that RSS feed towards my news screens into my house. So now I can steer which articles I want and which uh, or which streams I want and which streams I do not want. Nice. So this is. First of all, it's it's a little docker, uh, docker container. It's a docker container. It's a little docker container. It 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 hardly consumes any any resources. Um, it's very quick, and uh, it's it's insanely effective. You know, I I have now I now have three different streams: a, a text stream, which is probably the largest one, I'm afraid. Uh, which has well the, the, a lot of the uh, form of uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, earlier mentioned, sorry. And uh, I've got a, a new stream which has uh, uh, all the headlines in it um, with my local newspaper. I've got, uh, no, actually, I've got four streams. I've got a local stream which has my local news, so the city I live in and the immediate surroundings. I've got a couple of websites in there that it does scrape and then puts them all together. Uh, and I've got a fun stream with all kinds of weird news from the world. All right. Like a guy who has forty six bunny tattoos on his body. I don't know why you would want that, but why? Yeah, well, he's got a world record now. Good for him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, stuff like uh, you can talk about at the coffee machine or the water cooler. Either. You know, did you hear about that guy with the forty six bunny tattoos on his body? Yeah, he's got a world record now. <laughs> no. Stuff like that. You know, and it is uh, very good. It works. It works like a charm. It's very quick. It's very lightweight, um, and uh, uh, I enjoy this. I seriously enjoy this every day. Nice, fresh RSS, folks. Fresh RSS. I'm going to put the link in the in the show notes. There you go. That's my tip. Well, my tip is the Cold Fusion channel on YouTube. Um, the so guy fusion is a, a, a sort of a web language, but that probably has, does have nothing to do with it, does it? That, that's correct. It's it's not uh, creating energy. It's not creating websites with all kinds of modular things. 
now it's a it's a channel that does uh, in-depth stories on different topics like the apple car a 10 million uh, sorry a 10 billion dollar fail and he's going into what's uh, what was the the start and what what is the complete story towards uh, the failure which was plagued by corporate espionage did you know <laughs> well if you want to see it go check out that channel check it out no but also uh, meta just achieved mind reading using ai uh, things like that or one of my favorites i don't yeah ai deception how tech companies are fooling us that's that was one of the things i i, I think i mentioned this week did, uh, to did you we work for a tech company uh, no i'm in denial now <laughs> <laughs> uh, the story was about amazon doing their shopping uh where, where you just we don't work for amazon folks we don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could just pick something off the shelf and walk out at the store and it will all be charged on your uh, credit or debit card um fun which, thing is the, which, which, was, which wasn't ai at all it was no ai there was just a a large group of people that were labeling things based on video cameras in the store but it, they were selling it as AI, oh. and they even sell that product to other companies. It is artificial. Uh, it, it was super artificial. Yeah. It's not yeah. intelligent, but it was artificial. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the uh, Cold Fusion uh, channel on YouTube. It's, it's Cold Fusion TV channel on YouTube. Yeah. It's All right, very folks. interesting. Take a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's how it sort of wraps up with this episode. Yes. Um, please subscribe, make comments below. And if you got something that you want us to talk about, uh, let us know and we can see if we can do that. I've got an end tune. You see got an end tune. Uh oh. There you go. There you go. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.